Welcome back to today's prospect profile. And today it's Maverick Bork. And all I think when I hear the first name's Maverick is um, so every time he scores a goal, we're going to hear Danger Zone. Is that where we're going to go? And then I realize, hey, Shannon, that's a Top Gun reference. People may not 100% get that. So, at least until the Top Gun uh, sequel comes out that nobody asked for. Uh, 5 foot 10, 165 pounds. So what stands out with Bork right away is that 165 pounds. It's not exactly NHL level size, especially when you're seen as a two-way player, which he is. And some of the defensive aspects of his game he needs to work on may very well be because of his size. So that's going to be a theme. There's going to be, well, he's slipping a bit. The size may be holding him back. So why would I wear Oilers? Well, A, I haven't worn Oilers yet that I can remember in this series. And B, he's probably at least a couple years away. And so there's no reason you can't have another center in the pipeline just in case. His strengths are teamwork, puck handling, and agility. Skating is good, and his stick work is good. So... February 1st, he had seven points against Halifax. He was doing very, very well, and then he got injured. His last game was the 7th of February. So he got injured just as he was starting to really hit his stride, which means you might be looking at another steal in the draft. You might be looking at another guy who might have been on the verge of having a huge February and March, and well, at least the first half of March, right? And having scouts go, hey, this kid needs to move up, and then it didn't happen because he got hurt. Uh, that's seven points against Halifax. Impressive. October 20th through December 6th, he had a 16-game point streak. So consistent scoring. And next year, very likely to still be in the queue, will be one of the top players and could put up 100-plus points depending on what happens with next season, where it's played, how it's played, and all that other wonderful stuff. He's a smart player in all three zones. Thinks the game very well. So as a cerebral player, he's very good. And again, I thought, you know, Edmonton could, could really use that. They could use a third slash fourth line center that can play this way. He creates turnovers. So while he does have defensive moments that y you might notice in, in a negative way, he's also 18. So that's something that can be fixed. Again, when I'm looking at, at, at scouting reports, if I see a kid's too small, I go, well, they can bulk up. If I see a kid makes defensive errors, I go, well, yeah, there's some mental errors you can see in the game. As long as they have that raw skill. I think that's what's most important. And as long as they're good skaters, that's very important as well. If they have the speed, they have the skating stride, and they have the talent, that's really important. So any other parts of the game you can find that you go, well, I don't know if I'd take them here. Those are things that can get fixed. Uh, reminds me of Phil, Phil Deno was what one of the reports said. Now Philippe Deno, of course, playing for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, has rounded out into a pretty good two-way forward himself. So... If that's the comparable, that's not too bad. Uh, would be nice if he was bigger, but he's very smart and has skill. So that's exactly what I'm talking about, which is, yeah, he may very well get passed on at, say, 12, 13, or wherever you're going to be in the draft. But once you get later on, there's going to be a team that looks at him and says, you know what? The skill level's high enough. The compete level. His hockey sense is good enough. I'm going to give him a shot because I think we can have him bulk up, add some muscle, and turn him into a steal. So again, when we look back on drafts six, seven, eight years later, we can look back and say, hey, that was a, a steal right there, and maybe this is it. Maybe he's a guy who doesn't make it. Maybe he doesn't add that bulk. Maybe he ends up having a really good career in Europe. Maybe that happens. We just don't know. So number 28 on hockey prospect, but they, they seem to be torn on whether or not he is going to be a really good, solid first round star prospect, or if the defensive inadequacy and the 165 pounds are going to hold him back. And again, any any errors you might see that defensively, I would say, yeah, I've got a coach that can fix that. If you have a good team, you got a coach that can fix it. Uh, number 18 on future considerations, number 28 on ISS hockey, number 22 on central scouting among North American skaters. And he's number 12 on Elite Prospects. The one I forgot to put on the board, he's ranked number 26 by Bob McKenzie. So again, he'll probably be a later draft pick in that first round. Um, Elite Prospects having him at number 12, that's as high as anybody has him. And Hockey Prospect and ISS Hockey having him at 28. 
That's as low as anybody has them. Although, with Central Scouting B22, that is among North American skaters. So if it was an overall list of everybody all pulled together, he may very well have been at 28. But, you know, he, he may very well end up being a steal. Last year for Shawinigan, played 64 games, 25 goals, 29 assists, 54 points. This year, still Shawinigan in the QMJHL. 49 games, 29 goals, 42 assists, 71 points. The other just interesting note is that he is still learning English. He's uh, he's fluent in French. His English is okay. He's getting by with it. And you do wonder if some team might interview him and say, well, he doesn't speak English, and a lot of these other French prospects have already learned the language. And, and we'll see if that might cause that tiebreaker between him and another prospect. I'm telling you, if he slides too far, he, he does have that chance to be a steal. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below regarding Maverick Bork. And if you're wondering where the Germans are, you know what's interesting is there were two German players outside of Stutzla who were supposed to be mid-first rounder. And they appear to have slipped. So they're still in the first round. Videos on those guys are coming. But they definitely appear to have slipped. I'm still going through a list that tells me where players are in the overall average. And it told me today to go with Bork. But the German players are on their way. So let me know your thoughts regarding Bork. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.